Hey there, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to day 21 of albums that are 40 years old in 2022. We are looking back on 1982, 28 days of February. I'm picking my 28 favorite albums from 1982. Today, we've got a real good one here. Debut album from a uh, legendary U.S. heavy metal band. This album was released June 7th, 1982 on the Liberty label. Produced by Joey DeMeo and Ross the Boss. Yes, I'm talking about the debut album from Man of War, Battle Hymns. All right, this, like I said, this is their debut album. They would have since gone on to release many, many albums, but this is where it all began. Eric Adams on vocals, Joey DeMeo on bass, Ross the Boss on guitars and keyboards, and Donnie Hamzik on drums and percussion with a guy you might have heard of before on a little bit of narration on one of the tracks, Mr. Orson Welles. So, uh, yeah, this is um, this is the humble beginnings of Manowar. They would go on to take on this crazy per persona album subsequent to this and live shows throughout the years and, you know, death to false metal and they would wear, like, the loincloths and, you know, the animals, animal furs and all that kind of stuff and the swords and things. I mean, taking the whole idea of uh, a heavy metal band Two kind of ridiculous extremes, but you know what? The music always backed it up. That was the important thing. You had the amazing vocals of Eric Adams. You had these big, heavy riffs. You had the gymnastic bass playing of Joey DeMeo. And more importantly, just really memorable American power metal songs. I mean, traditional metal, power metal, whatever you want to call it. You know, Man of War was so hugely influential on the heavy metal scene in the 80s going into the 90s. And uh, specifically, a lot of the European power metal bands that really hit big in the 90s, you know, the framework is right here, right on these early Man of War albums. And I, I have a real soft spot for this debut because I think here it's kind of no nonsense, no bullshit, just hard charging, riff driven, heavy metal, classic metal tracks on this album. To me, the more I listen to this album over the years, it's like it's almost like this is like take that that Montrose playbook from the very first Montrose album, bring it into 1982 up the volume a little bit <clears throat> and that's kind of what you got here on this on this album specifically i mean this these are just good riffy heavy rock tunes all right real catchy stuff you got death tone is so great so amazing so memorable you got metal days classic anthem from man of war you got fast taker shell shock you got the band namesake man of war man of war born to live forevermore i mean it's just it, it just so cliche ridden nowadays you look back on it but man this is where it all started right uh the incredible dark avenger which of course has orson welles appearing on dark avenger is so epic and doomy and just like hard charging metal just great uh you got williams tail little bass solo right and then battle him battle him again you know man of war early on always on every album they included this big epic doomy piece you kind of get two of them here with Dark Avenger and Battle Hymn, but specifically, specifically Battle Hymn is really, really heavy and just bone crunchingly heavy and, and just memorable and epic. And ah, this, this, this is just a really, really good album. Uh, you know, they're, they, they, they came out with a handful of albums after this that, you know, many people uh, pinpoint as, you know, the peak of their career. And I would agree with that. Um, I still have a really soft spot for this one, though. This album, generally speaking, when I look at the career of Man of War, uh, if this isn't my favorite album, it's either number two or three. It generally is always right up there. I just really dig this one a lot. It's quite, quite good. So uh, let us know what you think of Battle Hymns, the debut from Man of War, down in the comments below. But also please cast your vote for or your pick for today, day 21, right? We are rounding on the last week of the month. There was a couple of people were like, uh-oh, the last week of the month, here's where all of Pete's heavy hitters are coming in. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. All the ones that I think mean the most to me. I mean, like I said, I've liked everything that I've thrown out there this month quite a bit, and I have a huge list of honorable mentions I'm going to get to on the final day. But, uh, yeah, this this last week are the ones that uh, really, really resonate with me. You know, it started over the last couple of days, but, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, the real special ones are coming up. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. Stay tuned. we got the Hudson Valley Squares coming up tonight. Speaking of 1982, more album wars happening tonight. 
right we got another good one coming up so uh, do not miss that we've got uh, this week and next week will be it for uh, us on the Hudson Valley Squares tackling these 1982 album wars and then we're going to move on to uh, normal topics going forward so uh, tune in tonight and next Monday night for two more 82 album battles and uh, what else we got coming up here we've got uh, ranking the album shows coming up on Strapping Young Lad okay Zephyr a really cool band out of Colorado that's featured a very young Tommy Bolin on uh, lead guitar. We've got tomorrow, we've got In the Prog Seat. We're going to be talking about, it's going to be a two-part special. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, our favorite ten prog albums of all time, each one of us. And we're going to split it up in two episodes. So we're going to do five tomorrow night and five the following Tuesday. So that's, stay tuned for that. We've got Wednesday, new album review day. Uh, man, we got all sorts of stuff here. And again, it's uh, you might not get that many this week because I think my listening time is going to be a little cut kind of short this week uh, due to a bunch of things. But uh, we've got things like uh, new Amorphous, got new Voivod coming in. We've got, uh, what else we got here? Oops, as I drop things all over the place. We've got uh, new Simon Phil. Phillips Protocol, we've got new Space Lords, we've got, what else, new 10, we've got new Spirits of Fire featuring Chris Caffrey, we've got uh, Archival Live from Cactus, we've got the new Star One, we've got the new uh, uh, Jonas Lindbergh, we've got, man, all sorts of stuff here, new Elium, I'll get a couple for you, new Robert Fripp, uh, box set of soundscapes man all sorts of stuff just coming in man 2022 is in full swing so stay tuned for that uh, over the next couple wednesdays you'll get uh, reviews of all of this stuff and what else thursday the monsters den friday morning the funhouse with martin popoff and myself saturday is the uk connection with simon brain stephen reed and album homework assignment coming up on sunday so lots happening this week so do not miss any of it. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And click on that notification bell so you get notified of all of our content. And that we have the links below to our Ko-Fi page for channel donations as well as our merch page where you can get all sorts of cool, see it, tranquility stuff. So uh, thanks for watching IMP Part. We'll see you real soon here on the channel. Take care. Bye-bye.